Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Famke and welcome to the Mippy Makes Dating Podcast. Today, I don't know if I should call it episode 1 or no, we did episode 1. I don't know if it's episode 2 or 3 because I did uh, spring knitting plans in between. So I would say this is episode 3 because we're in March. So that's just what I'm gonna go with. Today I have 3 finished objects for you. Then one that's almost finished, so I don't know if it counts as a finished object. Then I also have two whips and some yarn acquisitions, not too many, nothing too crazy after my huge spring knitting plans. Although I did buy some yarn today, but we will not talk about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's just get into the finished objects. The first knitting uh, finished object was number one on my spring knitting list which is really satisfying that it's almost finished or it is finished actually and this is the Augustine's number one no it's not Augustine's number one. Oh my god oh my god it is Augustine's number one this is the Augustine's number one sweater as you can see if you know the pattern, I made it without the ruffle in the front and it actually extends all the way to the back. I chose to not do the ruffle because I feel like there's so much going on in this sweater already. Just by the colors that I picked out, it's not really neutral or anything per se. So I felt a ruffle would just be a little bit too much. So I chose it without. Then I also haven't done the eye cord belt in the waist. But I've worn it once and I quite like wearing it loose, so I'm not sure if I'm ever going to add it. Also because in a pattern it's not really described how to insert it, which I'm kind of confused by. Because you don't yarn over anywhere to leave a hole so that you can insert anything. I think maybe you just have to make a hole in your knitting by really forcing it through, but that doesn't sound right to me, so I'm just leaving it without. Then the neck band, I actually inserted some elastic here, which you can see because it's quite uh, curly and I also haven't blocked this yet. But the reason that I inserted some elastic is of course to really cinch this neckline in, but also as you can tell, to really give this more of a rounded natural look where the front is lower than the back, because there aren't any short rows in this pattern. So I decided to add the elastic and then it gives that more of a natural shape. The pattern overall, I think it was a really fun knit. I really um, loved the construction of it. I've never knitted anything that has a construction like this, where there are increases that look like that. And then this is all knitted in the round. And I think just this whole shape of the armhole is so beautiful and feminine and unlike anything, like I said, that I've ever knit before. Then it has beautiful poofy sleeves, which I just absolutely love. Then an eye cord and then a one by one little rib ruffle, which is just really smart and clever. Mine is, as you can see, really fluffy. It has a really beautiful halo because I used the two threads of mohair held together with the, just the sock yarn from a Walmart Verve, which is a hand dyed company. And this is all that I have left, which is quite a lot. But I had to buy, like I mentioned in the other video, I had to buy another skein of it. So I used two and a bit. So I'm actually go going to knit my first pair of socks with that one, but I'll get into that later in the video. I'm getting carried away, basically. Then we have the little peplum, also in a pattern. It's does short rows in the back to make the peplum of the back longer which I didn't do I felt fine just having it all one length and I just didn't feel like tackling short rows just yet because I've never really done short rows properly so I didn't do it for this one then the I cord this was also my first time doing an I cord and as you can see in the back I didn't really know how to attach it so it's looking quite messy it's also a little bit bumpy, but it's in the back and I don't really mind. More over the eye cord, like I mentioned, it has it on the ruffles here. Now, 
the pattern, the number of stitches for the I cord was like double the amount that you can see here, which I actually did. And then it was just incredibly long and I was not happy with it. But the I cord took so long also that I didn't want to do it again. So I actually did something that's not a normal knitter would do, which is I just cut it in half. I just literally, I just took the I cord and just cut it. That's what I did. And then obviously there were a lot of threads and I just kind of s did some needlework like a doctor or something. And it looks decent. This is actually the side that I did that on. And I'm not gonna say that it looks the best, but it definitely doesn't look the worst. Like when I describe my technique, I think you would imagine it worse than this. So I think I did a decent job. Then also for the eye cords, I think eye cords usually are open, but I actually seamed them close so that it's more like an actual ribbon, which I felt made just more sense to me. Then I did make some pattern notes. So I'm just gonna look on my phone for any other adjustments that I made. Oh yeah. So I didn't do a gauge swatch because that's not my thing. I think that's yeah, I just don't do it. Honestly, for the future, I think I would like to be someone that makes a swatch. But I don't know when that's going to happen. But I just measure it, my sweater, you know, at a later time. But obviously it's not blocked or washed or anything. But the uh, gauge should be 16 by 22. And then my, well, mine was 16 by 20. It means that if I were to knit 10 rows, then my sweater is longer than their sweater if they knit 10 rows. So what I did was I did, I believe less increases here to create the same amount of length. And then I did pick up two extra stitches for the sleeves. So my sleeves are two stitches bigger technically, which you can see right here because it, when I didn't pick up this stitch that's in between, it just made a huge hole and it's still looking pretty holy. Um, but I just, use the extra yarn that was on the back to kind of stitch it up and this also definitely doesn't look the neatest there you can tell also in the back but i also think it looks absolutely fine and nobody's really gonna notice so all in all i'm really happy with this sweater it definitely has like i said a couple of flaws that maybe i would do differently in the future but i think it's a really lovely sweater and this just screams summer spring and it makes me really happy to look at with all its bright colors. Whilst working on that sweater, I felt like I needed a little bit of a knitting break. And I also just really wanted to start knitting a hat, which was my first hat. It's this one. So this is the Manhattan hat, the bulky edition. And then I knit that in the Lana Grossa Seta Suri Big. Then I held two strands together, so it's extra chunky. Then I made the junior size. Just because I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough yarn to make the adult size. And I would need to make the adult size S. That would be my size according to the measurements. But I decided I have a small head. So I'm just going to try to do the junior size. And then I can always frog it. Or buy more yarn. And yeah. And after I frogged it or something. I don't know. I just wanted to try it. So this is how it looks. I really love doing these decreases and then it's all together on the top with a Kitchener stitch, which I always forget how to do, but I manage pretty well, I feel like. This one I also didn't block yet. I feel like when I block it, my decreases here will all look a little bit better. And then also the folds, you could have a bigger fold. And I think for my next Manhattan hat, I'm going to actually make the one that's folded double because when I wear this outside like I mentioned I get really bad pain in my ears from the cold and I really feel like I need a, a double folded rib for that because this one still hurts my ears but it is really cute then I had a lot of leftovers which I really didn't expect so I decided to make my first little Sophie shawl which has been on my knitting list but I didn't want to knit it with yarn that I bought for it. I just wanted to 
have it as something that I make with leftovers. So whenever I have some leftover yarn, this is something that I can just whip up. And then eventually I will have this in a bunch of different colors and sizes. And you can match it, which is really cute. And it's quite small. But actually in the pattern, they do really smart. And they tell you that you have to divide your yarn that you have in half. And then knit or do the increases to whichever point the first ball of yarn finishes and then start decreasing so mine i believe is half the size as it should be but it's actually the perfect size for me i actually wouldn't want it any bigger and i can knot it either once but twice is actually better because when i tie it only once it actually becomes like it look it becomes undone so this is how i would wear it and I really like it. I feel like just like this, it's already looking super cute. So those are my three finished objects. Then I have another one. But this one is like 90% done, I would say. And it's my crochet pants. I worked on these for so long. I think they took me about one and a half months. And they are looking really big. This is definitely not my waist size because, yeah, as you can see, I have about that much left. So I really have to think about a nice waistband that I can add to this. And then I really have to insert some elastic to really make this cinch together so it will actually fit me. I could probably also do one of those tie belts that they do often in crochet but I think an elastic waistband would suit me more it would make it more comfortable in my opinion but these are the entire legs I do believe one leg is slightly bigger than the other but it does not really matter that much and also like I mentioned in the first knitting podcast I just for the life of me couldn't get the bottoms to match I don't know which one I did first. I believe it was this one. This one was the first pant leg. This was my second. And you can see that the hem... Oh, it's hard to hold up, sorry. The hems are different. Now the length is also a little bit long, actually. So I'm hoping they don't become longer from how heavy they are. Because they are quite heavy. But in the worst case, I thought I could just hem them on my sewing machine which honestly sounds horrific to do it to a crochet project but that's the worst case scenario so those are the little trousers and that pattern is from a wonky zebra i believe on etsy but it has very limited sizing so i don't know if i would necessarily recommend it but it's of course a vintage pattern then i also cut the lining already for the pants so here's just how that looks this is just a cotton jersey fabric, like a t-shirt fabric. And what I did was just when I didn't uh, seam it yet, I just placed it on top of the fabric and then matched the seam. So I believe this is the front. And then this is the back, I believe. And it just goes all the way down. And then this is, of course, then the two seams that I have to sew. Then you would open it like that. And then this would be the inseam that I have to sew. But as you can tell, I haven't done that yet. For some reason, I just haven't feel, felt very motivated to start working on this project again. But I know the time will come that I will finish it. And now for my works in progress. I've actually managed to almost finish another sweater. And I don't know if I should feel ashamed of how much I'm knitting or proud. I think neither. I'm actually knitting the Moina sweater from Vert and Rose, which I absolutely love her account on Instagram. Every single pattern she brings out is amazing. And I actually saw a sneak peek from her for another pattern. And I just can't wait for her to release it. I know as soon as it's released, I'm going to be casting that one on. And yeah, it's just perfect. But for now, I'm making this one, the Malwina sweater. So I've done about half of one sleeve and I'm actually kind of working two sleeves at the same time. So here I started the lace. 
I really love that this sweater has all of these raglan increases kind of hidden in this little cable detail, which actually is the same cable detail as the Augustine's number one, but it's knitted in a different way, which is really interesting. Then the color is really nice and chunky. I was actually thinking of making this a folded down color, but I decided to keep it like this because it's unlike anything else that I have on my knitting list and it's just nice and chunky. I think the weather still allows this type of sweater. I've already inserted the elastic in here, so it's nice and stretchy. I don't want it to stretch out because it's feeling quite a heavy and bulky knit. That's also why it's just knitting up incredibly fast. It's knit on six millimeter needles. And then only the cuff of the sleeves is knit on 4.5 millimeter needles. So like I said, I'm on sleeve island right now. I'm also just to note my gauge does not match at all. So I'm knitting the extra small, but when I measured it, it's actually more the size of a medium. So I'm making more of an oversized sweater. So I'm quite worried that my sleeves are going to be really long. But when I tried them on, this point where you start the lace pattern, it had to reach your elbow. And for me, it was actually above the elbow. So I seem to have long arms. So I made it this part two centimeters longer. So I really hope that that doesn't come to bite me later when I finish the lace chart. So I've done about 11 rows right now. I will show you in more detail. And then it's just four repeats. So this is two and two again. And so far I'm really enjoying this knit. And I think this will be a really nice and classic sweater to wear because it just goes with absolutely everything. I, like I said, I have some other sweater plants, but none of them are white. So, and I'm also a little bit hesitant to make more white sweaters just because I don't want to have so many sweaters that are all the same color. But yeah, and this is the ribbing, how that's looking. I'm just really happy with this. I'm knitting this in drops Nepal. And I'm holding it together, of course, because I couldn't resist with some drops mohair or mohair silk blend kits. I think they just call it kid silk. Yeah. The pattern calls for only the drops Nepal, so that could be the reason why my gauge is a little bit off. Or maybe I'm just a loose knitter. I also feel like that may be the case. But I just really love that it's more fluffy like this. You can kind of see the halo. I feel when it was just the drops Nepal, it just felt a little bit plain to me. That yarn is also actually 65% wool and 35% alpaca. And in my first knitting podcast, I was actually knitting my own pattern for the first time. And it was going to be an Austrian inspired cardigan with beautiful bubbles and, and cables and embroidery. But I just felt, I just felt really demotivated to work on that because for me, knitting really has to be a relaxation. Following someone else's pattern is already difficult enough for me, let alone making up my own pattern. It's also actually why I got rid of my knitting machine, because I just feel knitting has to be, like I said, enjoyable, relaxation, something I can do right here on the couch and not where I have to go sit behind a desk and really pay so much in attention to what I'm doing. So I feel this is a better way for me to knit, just following other people's patterns. So I decided to use the yarn and frog some of the work that I had done and use it for this sweater. So yeah, I think it's going to be finished maybe in a week. And I've already been knitting on it for one and a half week. So that's quite exciting. So it's almost finished. Then I have one other work. In progress which is in a little how do you call this crate a plastic pink crate and the colors exactly match which is really funny this is the date night sweater by k3 i believe and i've only started the neckband that's all that i've done then it has a lace pattern in the front and i've only done two bubbles so far the reason I've not progressed on this is because, of course, I'm knitting the other sweater. So that has my main focus and attention. 
but also because the pattern doesn't have any short rows. And I really enjoyed that sweater because it actually had short rows, which was my first time doing that. And I just feel like I want this to have short rows as well because I really enjoy the fit and the progress. It's actually not too difficult, it just seems very difficult. So I want to add it, but I don't know how to. So for now it's kind of on hold. I'm knitting it in uh, Concept by Katja, the Cotton Merino. This is color 137 and it's just a beautiful dusty pink color. And I saw this in my local yarn shop and I was already looking at this yarn for this sweater at home. And I was there, I saw it, I was just... you got. I gotta take it home now because I've seen it in real life. So <laughs> there was just no getting this out of my mind. I've only got six balls of it and the sweater probably needs about eight. So I'm gonna have to go back to the yarn store and just buy two more. But it's worth it because it's just really beautiful. The fabric of this is 70% cotton and 30% virgin wool. So I feel like this is also a pretty summery sweater knit. So I'm quite proud of myself for that. So. Those are all the works in progress that I have. And now we go to the yarn acquisitions that I have. The first one is a wool binder, I believe it is called. Now there are a lot of wool binders out there, most of which are really expensive. Unless you get some that are made from metal and plastic, like from AliExpress, then they are like 10 euros, which I've had in the past and I got rid of, you know, when I stopped knitting. And I just didn't really enjoy it that much. Things always got tangled. And I just really wanted a wooden one. So I was searching and then I found this one. And it's called Durable. And the brand I believe is Scheepjes. Which I think is a Dutch or German brand. But the way that this one works together is quite strange. So you have two, these two long sticks. With more sticks on the end. That you can remove. And then put inside different holes to adjust it for the length of the hang that you are using. Then it comes with these two middle pieces and then it actually works like this and you put some of it down. This is the base, then you put this one on top, then the little circular thing, I don't know why. Then one of these on top. And then one of these. And it's really funny because some websites that sold this one actually call this an Amish wool spinner. So I don't know if it's Amish necessarily. But as you can see, then it works like this. So you have to put it down on the table. It's not one of those that has a clamp. So it does move around a little bit, but it's also quite heavy. And I do feel like you just saw it's really just super easy to take apart. It's just a matter of seconds and it's done. And this one I believe was 30 euros, which I think is a really reasonable price for what it is. And I've really enjoyed using it. It's how I wound up this little skein. So I would say that's proof that it works the way that it should. Then the next yarn acquisition was a set of needles. So my favorite needles are these ones. These are my favorite needles. These are Knit Pro Symphony needles. And I don't know what this type of wood is called in English, but it's just a really polished type of wood. So it's not like bamboo, which I feel just has too much friction. But these are just super smooth and I don't really like metal needles. And once I found these, I just got rid of all my metal needles. I sold them. So I was looking to buy a set of these, but it was quite expensive. Then I came across Drops Romance Needles, which seemed to be from the same material. So I decided to get a whole set of those, which actually, now that I think of it in hindsight, was quite risky because I've never tried them out, but I just got all of the sizes. So it's in my little needle case. These just fell out. So, And then it's all organized by size. So I believe the smallest here are 3 millimeter. Then they go up to 8 and then I have 9 and 10 over here. 
And so far I'm quite enjoying knitting on them. I do really notice the difference now that I'm working the Mawina sweater. Because I have the 6mm needles from the Drops Pro Romance. And then I also have that size for the Knit Pro Symphony. And then I can really tell the difference and I prefer still the Knit Pro Symphony. But these really do get the job done and for now they work just fine. Maybe later I will get more needles or feel like I need to have more doubles and then I will get some of the symphony needles. Then also from the yarn shop that I got this yarn, which I guess is also then a little bit of an acquisition. I also picked up this. This is the Gazelle Happy Feet, I believe it is called. It's never focusing this camera. Oh my god. Happy Feet Unicolors. I don't really know what this weight classifies at. They call it fine. Because this sock yarn is 50 grams for 165 meters. And usually sock yarn to me is 100 grams for 400 something meters. So this is kind of like an in-between of the... Of something that you would do as a DK or as like an actual sock yarn like this one. But I just got it because I thought it would be a nice base to either use for the cap and toe paired with this one. Just to have like a nice neutral in there. And also I thought maybe to hold it together with some mohair kit silk. Because I always see knitting traditions do that and I believe it makes the socks more durable. So I just got one little thing of this and it's actually really soft this one. And I believe it's also because yeah, it has 25% of polyamide in there. My next acquisition was this little hank of hand dyed yarn from Stephen and Penelope in Amsterdam. It's called Life in a Long Grass DK Twist and it's 100% fine superwash merino in the color noon. And I just really fell in love with this when I saw it in the store. Felt like treating myself. And I really love just the tip of yellow that it has here. And I got this with a beanie in mind. I was thinking another Manhattan hat bulky edition. I could definitely make that with this yarn. But then I started thinking maybe this should be also a pair of socks. But the reason I'm kind of in doubt is because it's 100% superwash merino. And I feel like socks need to have either polyamide or nylon in them to really make them last longer. So I don't know if I want to use a quite expensive skein to make socks that are going to have holes in them. And obviously spend a lot of time knitting. So let me know what you think would be best or if I can hold it with some mohair and that will make it last longer. I would love to know your thoughts. Then continuing on the sock journey, I got these two needles. I got 2.25 millimeters and 3.25 millimeter needles. This is Zing, which is also, I believe, yeah, Knit Pro. I've never used this type of needle before, but these are the aluminium needles. I'm sorry, you can both see the camera and the ring light in there. I will take them away now because it's probably annoying for you. You can either knit socks with the magic loop with a long cable. Most of the patterns recommend an 80 centimeter cable. But it was really difficult for some reason to find interchangeable needles in the right size. So I decided to just get these two. And they were quite affordable as well. So I hope that these needles work for my foot size. But I'll keep you updated in my next knitting podcast. And then we are already on the last yarn acquisition, or I would say pattern acquisition. And it's a little knitting book. This is the Lana Grossa Nording Knit. And I got this because there was one pattern in here specifically that I just really loved. So I got this little book. There are also other patterns in there that are really nice. So maybe I will knit those one day. And it's definitely more economical than buying a pattern from an indie designer. But of course it's more fun to buy a pattern from an indie designer and to support a small business. But this book was $6.50 so that's quite affordable. Because I believe there are 21 patterns in here, it doesn't say on the front. But yeah, I'm just going to show you the one that I want to make. 
This one I also really love, like a little slip over. But I'm going to be knitting this beautiful, beautiful cardigan. I've been looking for like the perfect cardigan pattern. And to me, this is the perfect cardigan pattern. Big balloon sleeves, a double folded neckband, a round neck, small enough needles to make, to have like nice opal buttons. And I just absolutely love this one. So I think it's going to be a great staple cardigan in my closet that I just can wear basically on any summery day or like as a jacket outside. I can just already picture it and I think it's going to be really nice. So that was all for my Mippy Mix Knitting Podcast Episode 3. I hope you enjoyed it and that you got some knitting done whilst you were watching this or maybe just got some inspiration. And I wish you all a really nice day. Bye!